What's going on, everybody? I'm Grim. I'm Jolt King 627 I'm Vile Mods. And I'm KT of Family Foam Sport. And we are all your hosts, and welcome to PNN. Just in time for the 2022 holiday season, Nerf released the Elite Junior line, a series of brightly colored dart blasters intended for a younger audience. They're all springers, featuring big, chunky aesthetics, large, easy-to-grab priming handles, grips designed for small hands, no modular features, and a reduced power level. Most importantly, they feature a 6-plus age recommendation, as opposed to the usual 8-plus on most mainline Nerf products. At initial release, the Elite Junior Series consists of the Explorer, a four-shot AR with a rear prime, the Flyer, a single-shot blaster with a rear prime and onboard dart storage, the Rambler, an eight-dart rotating cylinder blaster available in the Rookie Pack with a lot of extra darts and new break-apart targets, the Scout Fire single-shot and Cadet two-shot smart AR available together in the Ultimate Starter Set, and the Voyager, another two-shot smart AR, this time with an integrated stock and scope. All of these blasters are priced similarly to comparable Nerf blasters in the Elite 2.0 range. Although kids have always played with Nerf blasters under the age listed on the box, this is Nerf's first foray into an age group younger than 8, and it offers a lot of possibilities for general accessibility to foam flinging. I can imagine even older kids and adults with various physical disabilities benefiting from blasters with a lighter pull and a larger handle. Discord users Drift and Other Travesty found images of the new Nerf Double Punch via the Toys R Us website. The Double Punch is going to be under the Elite 2.0 subline and features um, design language inspired by the Moto Beast. Via the Amazon France listing that was found, it will be released on July 1st of 2023 for retailing at 44.99 euros. It has a 10 dart storage on top, dual magazines, and dual barrels. No other information has been released at this time. Nerf has revealed five new items based on the upcoming Dungeons & Dragons movie Honor Among Thieves, which is based in turn on D&D's Forgotten Realms campaign setting. Themberchod is a red dragon-themed blaster that appears to be a band-powered crossbow similar to the Rebel Diamondista. Although that power system is generally not great, Themberchod has the benefit of holding six darts in the bow arm storage instead of the Diamondista's four, as well as having a very cool wraparound tail. In D&D's Forgotten Realms, the dragon Themberchod lives under the auspices of the Durgar at Gracklestug, and his sedentary lifestyle keeps him visibly overweight, a detail which seems to be represented by the rounded pouch on the bottom of the bow body. This blaster will cost you around $28 USD, only time will tell if they've improved the band power system since 2014. Rakor is a blue dragon set to appear in Honor Among Thieves, and Rakor's blaster is a single-shot blaster with a two-barrel smart AR, similar to the Elite 2.0 duo or the double-barreled jolt from the Scravenger. Rakor has a lot of detailing and plastic layering with a big tail that wraps around to make sort of a thumbhole type grip. This little two-shot comes with four darts and sells for about $13. Paloran Dusk is an ancient and powerful dragon in the D&D world, but in this series, he's represented by a jolt. This single shot blaster will cost you $11. And finally, we have two melee toys, Holga's Great Axe and Zank's Dagger Sword, both based on weapons of characters from the films. They seem to be made in the tradition of the Enforce melee toys, uh, intended for light impact play. This is a style of toy we've seen only sporadically since 2011 when this series ended. Uh, in the Zombie Strike line, and most recently, a handful of Fortnite items. I'm really glad to see these being produced, and I hope Hasbro decides to make more melee toys like this in the near future. Continuing on in Nerf news, the new Rival Forerunner has been released as well. Showing up on Walmart and Target shelves, not really seeing them online just yet, except over on Targets for like a mid-January shipping date. The Rival Forerunner is a pump-action 12-round internal mag similar to the Saturn or Takedown that we're already familiar with. Has no stock attachment point and is coming in at $27.99 USD as well. Walcom has already posted a review video and went over pretty much the lackluster options that we have. Nothing that we haven't seen before. They didn't really do anything different, but a lot of people are really enjoying the color options and there's probably going to be half-dark kits in this coming week since they're now hitting the shelves. 
Discord user utter travesty found in the background of a nerf to Taiwan's deal, a blaster that is no, now known as the Elite 2.0 Storm Charge. It will be released under the Nerf Wild Edition subline of the Elite 2.0 series. As confirmed by the Walmart website, it retails for $31 online. Um, it also includes 20 darts to include accessories that are reused from the Nerf Modulus line. And um, unfortunately, it looks like similarly to the Fortnite SMG, it has its motors on the left side of the blaster rather than the standard right side. It also uses its jam door on the left side. The overall package of the blaster has a similar aesthetic to a rapid pistol or the dart zone spectrum. People believe currently that this might be a competitor to dart zone spectrum blast. No more information has been released at this time. Just when we thought Nerf's Dino Squad line was extinct, a couple reskins of the Stego Smash have hatched in a dual pack called the Stego Duo. One of the blasters appears to be a direct recolor of the single shot rear prime Stego Smash, while the other has a replacement fin that makes it look like a Demetrodon. At $22 with 10 darts, this pack is a little cheaper than buying two Stego Smashes and definitely offers a splash of new color to the Dino Squad collection. Nerf finally has its second release in the Gelfire line known as the Legion, a pump action springer with slam fire comes with a 130 round capacity hopper, firing roughly in the 115 to 130 FPS range thanks to Nerf Taiwan's review video. It now has a couple of new design features, primarily the interesting cup priming handle that it has on the back, which does make me wonder how the slam fire is going to work on that, as well as some peculiar location for their pick mount that's on the bottom of the grip. I don't know. But currently you can pick these things up at Amazon.com for $34.99 USD and surprisingly cheaper over on Target's website for $29.99 USD. Not really sure why there's a price difference, but if you are looking to get one, obviously you know there's a cheaper option available. The Game Face Tryon is now available for purchase. It costs $79.99, and free shipping on Game Face's website has been set at $79, so if you order one, you can get free shipping. I've seen a lot of people already getting these. It looks like it's going to be a community favorite. Dart Zone has produced a wide variety of shirts through White Rabbit Tees. The shirts include shirts on their Waffle, Ember, Chili, Ruby Darts, their Dart Zone logo, their number one darts period claim, and Bamboo Darts. Each of the shirts represents the respective theme and has a little image that goes along with it that is topical to the overall branding of the shirt. They uh, are priced at $24.99 and can be found on the Dart Zone website, respectively. Dorian over on the Discord found this very strange new Busby product. It's called the Spin Shot and it fires these odd little spinning plastic discs. It's an 8-round internal magazine and the central shaft spins when you pump it to fire the disc. <laughs> It's basically just like the old Bionicle Rotuka spinners. Pretty cool, and they claim some impressive ranges. Now, if you're the competitive type, I've got great news for you. Speed Dart International will be hosting a championship tournament this coming June 3rd and 4th at the Sports Domain Academy in Clifton, New Jersey. This tournament will be open to 20 teams worldwide, but no other information is currently available at this time. You can keep an eye out for more updates over on their website at speeddartinternational.com. The TCS2 is a new blaster that is 3D printed, licensed by Captain Slug, and produced by Eric Kraft. It features a pump action and a additional side prime. It has smooth prime and an adjustable stock and can be ch um, changed from 180 to 240 feet per second with a simple spring swap. As of current, there is no release on pricing, but there is a video if you guys are interested to see more on this blaster that will be linked down below. And now for a little bit of silly news. Silly Butts has released a repository of old, incomplete, or abandoned designs free for non-commercial use. The list is pretty long and extensive, so I do suggest checking out the Google Doc that Silly has provided. Obviously, nothing is allowed to be sold, but you can modify, and if you do intend to release, Philly has made it very clear to contact him before doing so. Links should all be down in the description. This episode on the Mod Spotlight, we have Reddit user the Tactories Nerf Rhino 3.0. What this integration lacks in bright colors, but makes up for with being stupidly clean and quite creative. 
From what I can tell, the base blaster is a rhino fire, but flipped on its side? I also see bits of Raven, Maverick, Vulcan, Charger, and even the Tri-Strikes barrel on there. It appears to fire from both barrels, but has the option to plug the top magwell with a tactical rail. I've never seen anything like this, and while it's a tad realistic for my taste, it still blows me away. Well done. And that's it for the first episode from the Provisional Nerf News Network. We had a ton of fun and learned a lot putting this pilot together, and we're really excited to keep the news coming. We plan on bringing you a new episode every two weeks, along with an accompanying podcast where you can hear more of our thoughts and opinions on the news, as well as some additional bits that didn't make the main show. We would absolutely love it if you would hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, maybe show it to your friends and help us grow this new project. Let people know that we're doing this work. Of course, we have a Discord where you can discuss the news with us in real time and contribute to the show, and we all have our own YouTube channels and Discords. You can find all of that stuff linked below in the description. A huge thank you goes out to everyone who already contributed news in the Discord, all of our families that tolerated us spending time on another new project, and of course, you for watching and supporting us. See you next time.